Alba. I am deeply honored to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month here at the White House. <laughs> Standing here makes me think of the giants whose shoulders I stand on, my ancestors, mi familia, whose strength and resilience flow through me today. My great-grandparents, Daniel and Guadalupe, and Catalino and Francisca were part of a wave of Mexican immigrants recruited to the U.S. in the early 1900s. They were young with little to their names, but had determination in their hearts. They worked on the railroads and in the fields, saving every penny, striving for a better life, not just for themselves, but for generations to come. They never stopped believing in the future they dreamed of. My abuelos, Isabel and Jose Alba, grew up in a world marked by segregation. They labored in the citrus groves and cotton fields, forced to use segregated water fountains and attend Mexican schools that offered half days and half chances. But despite the barriers, they never let go of their dreams. Jose believed in the power of education and made it to a private men's college, while my grandmother, with grace and sacrifice, raised five children. Jose's perseverance eventually secured him a white-collar job as an accountant, transforming the future for his family. That legacy of hard work and unwavering hope is something I carry with me every day, through my, though my own journey was not without struggle. My parents, Mark and Kathy Alba, were just 19 and 20 years old when they had me. Living paycheck to paycheck, I was a sick child in and out of hospitals, and I came to understand firsthand how deeply our health impacts our lives. My father's military benefits were vital to my care. Years later, when I became a mother at 27, I struggled to find safe products for my baby and family. I channeled my ancestors' drive and resilience to build a company focused on protecting the health of people and the planet. The Biden administration's commitment to the health of our communities, clean air, safe water, access to health care, is personal to me. They understand the importance of giving everyone a chance to thrive, just like my family. Today, President Biden and Vice President Harris have gathered us to honor the voices, stories, and contributions of our communities. My abuelito Jose never put limits on what I could achieve. I know he's proudly watching over me as I introduce a man who has stood up for our dreams. A humble public servant who served with honor and dignity Put your hands together for the President of the United States, Joseph R. Biden. talking about. But thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Folks, folks, welcome to one of the biggest Hispanic Heritage Months ever, ever at the White House. 
Before I begin, some of you have a lot of good friends here, a lot of elected officials. Not going to go through all, but I want to point out something that I heard me say all the time. One of the things that is changing, and you're going to ch — the Hispanic community is going to change America even more. Twenty-five percent of K through 12 children are Hispanic. Twenty-five percent. I've been saying this for a while. Some of you thought I was exaggerating, but I'm telling you, what's going to happen over the next 10, 12 years is going to change the dynamic of this country in a big way. And by the way, Jessica, thank you for the introduction. I'm uh, she, she's an actor, producer, advocate, author, and uh, she uh, knows how to build companies. <laughs> Jessica, if I'm really good, maybe you can get a, me a job in this. <laughs> God love you. <laughs> Youngest Latina to start and take a company public and build a billion-dollar company. You're somehow <laughs> Well, folks, uh, you know, uh, you've done it. You've done it literally by trying to make life better and safer for other people, safer and healthier for women and children and families. Not only made a successful company and a billion-dollar company, but you did it for a good reason. You did it not just for the profit. You did it for the people you care about. And it matters. It matters. And you've done it by embracing your heritage, a proud Hispanic heritage that I see in all of you here today. And I want to recognize our congressional partners who are here, including Pete, Chair of the House Democratic Caucus, Nanette. Who, where, where's Nanette? Now, that's crazy about me now. <laughs> I'm leaving, so she loves me. No, I'm not. <laughs> Alex of the Senate, retiring CHC Chair Grace, and so many members of CHC members. I'm looking forward to attending the gala uh, tomorrow night. I also uh, thank you all for all the public service and educators are here, artists, innovators, labor leaders and more who are here today, the members of the most diverse administration in history. Yeah. I made a commitment when I got elected. I was going to have an administration that looked like America, that taps into the full talents of our nation, including the incredible Hispanic Cabinet members who are here today. Secretary of Education Cardona, where are you, Mr. Secretary? Yeah. Small Business Administrator. Small Business Administrator Guzman. Where is Administrator Guzman? Stand there you are. <laughs> Secretary of Navy, Carlos Del Toro. <laughs> the Navy's here somewhere. As a, I see, okay, man. Well, well, thank you. Thank you. The saying goes, you are your ancestor's dream. You know, I think about the courage of so many of you and your ancestors who came and to America to start a new life. A nation that's more than just a place. You know, we're the most unique nation in American history, in the history of the world. We're the only nation not built on geography, ethnicity, or religion, but based on an idea, not a joke, an idea that we believe all men and women are created equal. Endowed by the Creator. No, I'm serious. Think about that as the base, not a joke. We're a nation of immigrants. A nation of immigrants. And by the way, it's an idea, not geography, an idea. And everyone, everyone deserves to be treated equally throughout their lives. You know, while we've never fully lived up to that, we've never walked away from it either. And we're sure in hell not walking away from it now. Since our founding, the very idea of America has been nurtured, enriched, and advanced by the contributions and sacrifices and hard work and dreams of immigrants and descendants from all over the world. Like so many of your families, like mine and Jill, families from Ireland and Eng and, and, and Jill's I, I, you know, I may be Irish, but I'm not stupid. I married, <laughs> I married Dominic Giacoppa's daughter. <laughs> you can say that again, man. No one screws around me. One of the reasons Jill and I really wanted to host today's celebration is to say thank you. Thank you for your partnership and your friendship. And I mean sincerely, we're forever grateful. I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I also want to host this reception because we have, we have progress to celebrate. 
Together, we're making the most significant investment in the Hispanic community ever in all of American history. We've centered equity, equity in everything we do. With the help of just three and a half years, we've created more than five million jobs for Hispanic Americans. The lowest Hispanic unemployment rate on record. We also turned Puerto Rico's economy, investing in more than $140 billion and adding over 100,000 new jobs in Puerto Rico. More Hispanics have health insurance than ever before in history. Record number of Hispanic small businesses, small businesses are starting up, like your little small business, a billion dollar rover. <laughs> Historic investments in Hispanic saving institutions. The 500 college, university, and community colleges that serve such a large percentage of Hispanic students. By the way, it's about $15 billion in those. Yeah. Under my plan for student debt relief, more than 5 million people received student debt relief, and it's going to happen where we're going to win in court, signifying a significant number, a, sig a significant number of Hispanic borrowers. The racial wealth gap, wealth gap is the smallest in 20 years. We're, we're, we're removing lead pipes so every American can drink clean water without getting worrying about our children getting brain, our children getting brain damage. We're delivering high-speed, affordable internet to every American, which is as essential today as when FDR delivered electricity to every American. It's that consequential. We've increased the child care subsidy funding by 50 percent, providing families peace of mind and still growing the economy. When we do these things, we grow the economy. When parents are able to go out and work and they can make more money, they grow the economy. And so it's a net savings for America. It really is. Let me be clear. We believe in an immigration system that reflects our values. We don't demonize immigrants. We don't single them out for attacks. We don't believe they're poisoning the blood of the country. We're a nation of immigrants, and that's why we're so damn strong. On my mother's side of the family are a bunch of Irish immigrants who came over on coffin ships in 1848 and 1850. And guess what? We don't have, we don't know, but if you go back and look, Irish and Irish Catholics were discriminated against as much as any other group of people ever came to this country. But guess what? We're proud as hell of what we've done, and all of you protecting your fund our fundamental freedom. The freedom to vote, the freedom to choose, the freedom to deny, not to deny any of those freedoms. And folks, in this administration, we don't erase history. Together, we make history. We make history. And today, we honor you and the long line of patriots throughout our history have made the promise of America real for all Americans. And let's finally honor this history by building the National Museum for Latino yes. Americans. I'm trying. I'm trying as well as the American Women's History Museum as well on the National Mall. And by the way, all of you have pushed us forward to be a country that we say we are, for freedom, justice, equality for all. And by the way, today, we honor this simple truth. Hispanic history is American history. Yeah. And, and by the way, a lot of you all have been here a hell of a lot longer than any of the rest of us. In America. In America. Yo, not a joke. Hispanic excellence is American excellence. Look, you're all standing and you're all going to start to rebel in a second, so I'm going to close this out. <laughs> I was elected to the United States Senate as a 29-year-old kid. I wasn't old enough to be sworn in. I had to wait 17 days to be eligible. And by the way, I was motivated. Not a joke. Many of you have been in my office. I have several bus, one of Cesar Chavez, who came to Delaware to organize the farm workers in Delaware. We are largest industry. Everybody thought it was a pond company. It's a $4 billion industry in agriculture and chicken. He came to organize. Here I stand 50 years later as your president, honored to celebrate the heritage of this incredible community. I always thank you. I always said America is defined by one word. I spent an awful lot of time with Xi Jinping more than any other world leader has. I spent over 90 hours alone with him, literally. Traveled 17,000 miles with him. I was on the Himalayan Plateau with him, and he asked me, he said, can you define America for me? Not a joke. Some of you have heard this. It's true. 
I said, I said, yes, one word. He looked at me through an interpreter. Oh, he said, what's the word? I said, possibilities. Everything's possible in America. Everything is possible in America. It's also the one word that defines Hispanic possibilities, heritage, possibilities. Because you've never, I've never been more optimistic about the future. Just to remember who the hell we are. I really mean it. We're the United States of America. We're the only nation in the world that's come through every crisis stronger than we entered that crisis, every single time, when we move together. Folks, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I am more optimistic about the future of America than I've ever been in the world before. We have the strongest economy in the world. We have the best system in the world. We just have to remember who the hell we are. And by the way, it all depends on maintaining our democratic values. So, folks, There's a whole hell of a lot. This is the single most consequential election, maybe the lifetime of anyone standing here, because it matters. The other team doesn't see the world like we see it. They don't have the same attitude we have. They are the most closed-minded people that I've ever dealt with. Like I said, I know I only look like I'm 40, but I'm a lot older. <laughs> I've been here 51 years. I was a senator for 36 years. Vice President, out four years, we're working as a, the Penn Biden Center, and then back here for four years. Folks, there's nothing we can't do. I really mean it. And I'm so, that's why I'm so happy about Kamala being upbeat about what's happening. So, folks, you're not going to let us, I have one great regret. There was a significant senator from the state of Texas. Democrat, who looked at me one day and he said, Joe, I think you're going to run for president one day. I said, what the hell? I didn't know what he was talking about. He said, but if you ever want to lead America and you ever want to win in Texas, you got to learn to speak Spanish. <laughs> True story. I took five years of French in high school and college. He said, I've... You're going to have time now. I do. <laughs> I am. And by the way, so what happened was, I, uh, I tried to speak French at a, at a, at a, when I, early on in my career in France, and they just laughed at me. <laughs> I tried to speak. We had the largest influx of Hispanics in, in 1980 census as any state and union as a percentage. So I got up, and we have a large community. And I got up, and I made a speech in Spanish. I mangled it. And they all cheered and said, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. And the bad news for you all is I'm not going anywhere. Thank you.